Hello everyone, I'm Father Lewis from St. Benedict and St. Elizabeth of Hungary Parish in Ridgely and Denton, Maryland, and welcome to a new segment on the Godcast called Making Space for Grace. We, all of us, need to open wide our hearts to allow God's grace to come in to our heart and to our soul and into our whole lives, that we might be transformed for him, by Him. We, all of us, have room for Him, and we should all make space for God's grace. And so this segment will be a daily segment talking about an aspect of our Catholic faith and helping us grow more deeply into it, and hopefully in a way that I can do it concisely. So today's first segment for making space for grace is about baptism. Baptism is the first of the seven sacraments in the Catholic Church, and it's the gate that opens wide the other sacraments as well. And so once you and I are baptized, we are given the grace by God and the capacity to participate in all the other sacraments, or at least in most of the other sacraments. I can't participate in the sacrament called matrimony. I'm an ordained priest. Nevertheless, the sacrament of baptism opens wide the gate to the other sacraments and to the full liturgical life and celebration of those sacraments and the life of the church. What I'd like to focus on today is this. The Paschal Candle. It's lit at your baptism as a symbol of Christ coming into your life and conquering the darkness of sin and death. And at baptism, you and I, all of us, we are entrusted with that light. In fact, our parents and godparents were entrusted with that light to teach us to keep the flame of faith alive and burning in our hearts and in our lives throughout the rest of our life, to keep that light burning brightly until we meet the one face to face who is the light of the world. Now, all of us were given one of these at our baptism. It's our baptismal candle. And when the priest or the deacon lit it at the Paschal candle, I was impressed I was able to reach that. He said, receive the light of Christ. And then he encouraged, exhorted, really, the parents and godparents to teach this child who will receive this flame, to keep it burning in their lives throughout the rest of their life, to teach them to keep it lit. Now, because each of us was entrusted with this flame, I, I want to bring a sort of parallel for us. Think of the Olympic Games. Before any Olympic Games begins, in Greece, this flame is created and brought forth and carried from one place to another, to another, to another, throughout the whole world. And this flame is passed on from person to person to person, from torchbearer to torchbearer. And that torchbearer successively gives it to the next person, carrying it from place to place until its intended location, that final location of the stadium where the Olympic flame is brought in and brilliantly and miraculously and wondrously inflames this large cauldron so that all who are participating in the games around the city and around the world can see that those games are taking place, that the Olympic flame is brilliantly lit so that all might know that the games are on. Now, what happens in that passing from torch to torch is that once one person passes the light on to someone else, the one who has just passed it on stops running stops going forward and frankly extinguishes their light because it's now up to the next person to take it the next mile or however long it might very well be. That is not at all what it means to receive this flame at our baptism. Instead, this is what the faithful Catholic does. When she or he goes forth in the world, in their workplace, in their classroom, with their family, with their friends, at the local diner, wherever they are. They live faithfully 
according to Christ, and they let his light shine so brilliantly in them and through them that they pass that light on to the next person. But they keep going, allowing that light and that flame to be lit. And each person they meet, and each place they go, they let the light of Christ shine in them and through them, that it ignites the hearts of the others, and hopefully ignites the desire to know and live Christ. We don't extinguish our flame, and we don't stop running. We keep that fire burning. In fact, if we don't, we let the light go out on us. How can we live faithful Catholic lives, my dear friends in Christ? So here's our challenge for today, my dear friends. Let the light that you've received at baptism remain vibrant, dynamic, aflame in your life by how you live faithfully and how you love like Christ. By the way, here's a second challenge for today. When were you baptized? It's the best day of your life. Your birthday matters, but your baptism day matters all the more. Why? Because you became part of the body of Christ and you were promised everlasting life. It's truly your birth into eternal life, at least the invitation of that. We have to live that out faithfully. So your baptism day enables you with faith, hope, and love, filled with the grace of God, to be able to fulfill that throughout the rest of your life. It's up to us to live out our baptismal obligation. So my dear friends in Christ, find out when your baptism day was and celebrate it every year like another birthday. Truth be told, I'm doing that today. Today is my baptism day, April 26th, and I'm grateful to my mom and my dad, my godparents. I called my parents today to thank them. I'm gonna call my godfather soon, and I'm praying for my godmother, who I trust is in heaven with God, watching over me, protecting me, and praying for me, just as she did when she was here on earth. My dear friends of Christ, go find out when your baptism day was. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go back to the rectory and have some baptism birthday cake. Baptism. It's the flame of love and the flame of light and the flame of light that we each pass on to one another. God bless you. Have a good day. And always remember to make space for grace.